Welcome to Dynamics Corner Podcast, your go-to resource for all things Microsoft Dynamics 365. I'm your host, Chris. And this is Brad. This episode was recorded on April 27th, 2023. Chris, Chris, Chris. You, you threw me there for a minute with the new intro. <laughs> that is a new I intro. You know. Did anybody notice it? I was it? a little uh, <laughs> thrown off. I like it. I like it. I, I, oh, I shouldn't have said anything? Okay. Anyway, doesn't matter. Chris, another episode in the books for us. It was a great episode. You know, it's one of those things that are often overlooked in an implementation and that I think that everyone should learn more about and be yes. more aware of. In this episode, we had the opportunity to speak with recent MVP Steve Chinsky about permissions within Business Central. <laughs> what? You started so, Googling where Riverside Cafe is. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is Riverside Cafe? I'm looking around for it. I'm like, you know. And I'm like, oh shit! I, let me get. Oh shit! I, let me go take a shower. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna. I gotta meet him somewhere. And I'm like, I'm running around and I'm reading your text and I'm sitting there saying to myself, wait a minute. There's no way he he's doing this. He's not leaving his house. There's no way. Nope. And I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. Maybe he's talking about something else. And then when you wrote back the software, and I'm like, you had me going for like an hour. Like, what am I? Oh, I'm like, oh. it was great. That was great. Yes, we've. You know, we've enhanced our production. We were moving, you know, we originally started with Teams, then we moved over to Zoom, and now we've progressed to Riverside. But the exchange was beautiful because I was explaining to Chris here that I texted you and said we're using Riverside, and you're going, I just got back from traveling. <laughs> where, I don't, where is Riverside? It was great. It was priceless. It was priceless. Well, so. I mean, I'm thinking Riverside, like, there's a Riverside like up 495. I'm like, there's a river. I'm like, oh, maybe he's stopping at the Starbucks at Riverside. And I'm like, oh, this is hilarious. I'm like, we're meeting at Riverside. I'm like, nah, why would he drive that far? I'm like, that's crazy. I'm like, maybe, maybe it's a cafe up near in like <laughs> northern Massachusetts near New Hampshire. I'm like, maybe he's got something going on. I'm like, you know, what's the trick, you know? <laughs> no trick, Mr. Steve. No <laughs> trick, Mr. Steve. It's just we're making some progress here. Uh, and thanks for taking the time to speak with us again today. Hope, hopefully uh, your trip and travels went well. I do want to say congratulations to you again for your recent MVP uh, award. It's beautiful. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> I will not say uh, congratulations to the Jets. Unfortunately, with this new system that we have, you got there, Rogers. I have a media board. I don't have a boo on there. I was uh, talking with Chris about what I should put on here, and that, that was not one of them. So, Chris, make a note, Mr. Producer. We need to add a boo to our board. Oh. So, <laughs> so, Mr. Steve, sure. thank you for talking with us today. I've been looking forward to speaking with you about this topic. Do you remember what we're talking about? permissions the uh the nemesis that we all have to live and breathe during implementation permissions how many implementations out there do you think have users with super for all the security i would probably say you know in the grand scheme of things i'm sure there are people who have super permissions on every implementation ones that deserve it and then ones that don't deserve it but but that's because not many for those who have been around long enough they understand permissions but then there's a group of people who are implementing now new to bc or new to nat you know i guess if you're in nav you're not new anymore but new to business central that if you don't go in and do them you know everybody always says get me started and you just oh, let me just pick super and get started and guess what boom they got the whole the keys to the kingdom and they're off and running so um tons i would say shitloads. Sorry yes, a, a lot of people have, I think, super. I've seen some implementations where everybody's super. Permissions have progressed over the years. They, they were extremely tedious early on in the onset of Navision where you had the roles and you had to put the objects in. And even in the sense where, you know, in Govern, everybody would do like, you know, uh, form zero, code unit zero, and then try to govern it versus data. Uh, with the table data with direct and indirect and then as they progressed we progressed up to permission sets 
uh, in groups which allow you to basically have those roles and group them together by function. And now, fortunately, with apps and extensions, you can have permission roles for those apps or permission sets, I should say, for those applications to try to further define, mm -hmm. you know, that get me up and get going. So with this today, also one of the uh, features that were recently added to the permissions, which uh, we can discuss, is the uh, not permission, I guess you could say, right? The deny, <laughs> one of those things that has been talked about for years uh, about doing because business central permissions is a grant-based system. So it's whatever you give someone a permission to wins, right? So if you have two roles assigned to a user in a permission set, you get whatever gives you the most permission. But now, what about this new uh, infamous you know, permission takeaway? I love it because it's finally, I think what, if you think about the evolution of permissions in Navision, Nav, Business Central, you know that in the early days, you know, giving field level permissions or denying a permission is like, it was like going to the dentist and having root canal. It was painful, sometimes ugly, sometimes <laughs> sometimes it was not really possible to some respect. But then we all we most of us who grew up in the nav space knew there was um, an add-on, you know, as one would say, called you know easy security. We all know it. We've all lived with that through the many decades of having it um, that allowed us to do more advanced permissions in the in the nav space. You know, there was field level, there was forms, and then forms you know turned into pages. Um, you know, and it allowed us to do kind of fancier security, let's call it, or better security that was more advanced than where it was. And then Business Central came around and easy security did not move into the app world. And then uh, recently, of course, um, there are apps that give you advanced security, um, one that I know of um, from Eric Hogard, um, that allow you to do more advanced level security. But what I love is finally that BC out of the box has kind of moved into more of um, it's bringing forth things that will help us out of the box without having to go in advance. Like, for instance, um, it's getting more involved with the Active Directory. So it's using security groups over user groups that's coming out. It started this wave and it's going to be permanent in the future waves, meaning the it will be decommissioned. The old user group name will be decommissioned, I think. I want to say November, but I think it might be next year. Be honest with you, giving them one year to move it over, people to move. But that, I love the deny. It's so nice to actually have, say, an AP clerk who you want to do their job, who needs access to certain things, but maybe they're not supposed to go to certain areas of the financials or maybe in the chart of accounts to see certain things that I don't want them to see. I can certainly deny access to things. Or maybe an order entry person who I don't want to have access at all to any chart of accounts or anything or something like that, but I'm making a very maybe bad analogy, but I love that feature. It finally gives me as an ex-accountant, you know, CMA kind of person, I can finally do permissions in a much more realistic sense because I can sit there and say to the person responsible, whether it be an IT director, manager, or the controller, okay, it's time to make permissions, guys. So, you know, go through and tell me what you want these people to do. And I always like to start off my conversations with them in in a very basic format. I try to teach them as best I can. And I use a spreadsheet. I do have it. I can share it with you guys on the screen if you want me to share it. Um, if you'd like to put it up on the screen, that would be great uh, for those that are viewing uh, on YouTube, our channel for representation of this podcast. Yeah, yeah so Steve, a question a for you too. Question for you too regarding permissions. You know, in the middle of a project, yeah, in the middle of the project, when do you, when should and, they start okay, thinking you about permissions? Tell me if it pops up. Oh, I, I think about permissions right after I kind of finish the data migration conversation, which is always the first thing you kind of speak about. You need to get the data in there. I like to talk about it right after that because. It's just a long conversation. I just know it takes so long to have it because people go back and forth. Sometimes I don't like going into user acceptance testing without the permissions in place. Now, some people think that's a very stupid idea. So there's two schools of thoughts. That's bad and there's, there's the good. Um, the reason I like going into user acceptance testing is I'd like to have the environment 
in a close enough way that production is going to look like. I would like to have the, the user permissions in place. I would like to have, even if error messages pop every day, I would rather it happen in user acceptance testing than in production. That, now, I'm that's sure you a guys good have been around. philosophy. You... That is a very good philosophy because part of user acceptance testing is not only the functionality, but you should test permissions. And one thing that I've found users are not going to tell you that they have access to things. They're going to tell you that they don't have access to things. Bingo. So I like your philosophy of incorporating security into user, secu uh, user acceptance testing. A hundred percent. I mean, I just, I, I just feel like, you know, in past lives and listening to colleagues and friends who've done this for so long, some people say, I go into user acceptance testing I, I give them a super maybe, or I give them whatever, or maybe I'll give them a couple of permissions and, and then change it to super later. I'm like, well, what have you tested? Did you test the process? I'm sure you did. You gave them super user. It's, it's going to work. But then it's like a week before go live. <laughs> you're running around with the chicken with your head cut off, trying to put permissions in place, and you're, and you're kind of screwed. Um, and, and that's kind of where, I mean, in that respect of it. So I'm like, you know, why not take the extra week, two weeks, sit down with the right person and start building out, you know, the permissions. It's not a lengthy task. It's just you have to give education to your customer first to get back the answer you want. So, like, take, for instance, I mean, I'm just joking here. I mean, this is user group, but now it's going to be called security groups, remember. So you can set up groups of people so you can set your permissions up. You got the name of the user. You know, you can go over, you know, you, you got the name of the user. You have co multiple companies if you want multiple companies. You know, am I a full user or a t device user or a team member? And then, of course, what profile that you might give them. Now, remember, if you give them a profile, profiles, remember, have different built-in permissions to themselves. Yes. So, And then that's kind of where the teaching comes into play. And what I've done is I've made a tab that says, you know, Here's my profile. We'll pick accounting managers because that's easy for everybody or business manager, which is typically what Kronos pops up all the time anyway when you're doing playing. But if you look, you know, if I pick accounting manager, oh, you get this and you get this. And I know the questions are going to arise. What does this mean? What does this mean? And this is kind of where you, you know, I'm an accountant. What, you know, and I get the, you can drill in and teach them how, what tables it goes to, what permission sets, it, what tables what pages, um, what reports, and et cetera, et cetera, it goes to. But I like to start here because without this basic starting point, you're, the only thing they're going to care about is, you know, hey, let me – give me super user. And it's – like I said, I mean most of the people I've spoken to in the last several years, this works because if you show them what a typical role gets and they can see it visually – they kind of put themselves into a in a frame mind in a frame of mind that says, "Oh, look, I need an AR clerk." Okay, so if I need an AR person, you know, this is what they get. Do I like what I see? Yes, they need customer, obviously. Basic stuff, obviously. You know, accounts payable. Eh, you know, do they really need? Um, does the AR person need that? Nah, probably not. So it won't be there. But it's a good starting point. And yes, m normal people will ask you, can you dig deeper? Can you take away permissions? And that's where the new feature, Brad and Chris, okay. what you said, that's where the deny comes into play, getting them more, you know, denying things. So you have a great sheet here. So on the left-hand side, you have a listing of all the permission sets, which I'd like to get into a little more detail about the definition of those permission sets. And then across the top, you have a matrix. Across the top is you have like what your role would be within the company. Yes, these so are then, the box roles, yeah. Okay, so then those audit, this is a Cronus listing. So those permission sets are the, you know, when you install a base system, the permission sets that are defaulted within the application. 100%. And then the roles across the top tell you what that role is and what permission sets they would have so you could see their functionality here. Now, the... Permission sets are what's, you know, we have a listing of like, you know, D365 basic, D365 basic inventory. Now, those permission sets are built based upon like permissions to objects, right? So in Business Central, you have 
table, table data, code unit, page, uh, report, XML port, you know, a number of different object types, as we'll call them. Yes. Right? This is where I think permissions get a little difficult, and it's fortunate that they have some default roles and default permission sets defined. Yeah, that's where so, the ugliness comes in. You're right. It, it is the ugliness, and I'm not trying to, to steer us away from here, but this is where I've seen some challenges and where they've added some functionality to the application to allow us to manage this. But how can you see what objects those have permission to and how can we make adjustments to those roles or make the determination if we need to come up with our own permission sets or yeah how do you scale that's the question too is how do you scale these permissions that's a common issue these permissions which come out of the box you know are these permissions are pretty much set meaning if i need to modify these or if i need to scale up scale down I, <coughs> excuse me, you would have to copy these, of course, to more of a custom permission because you're not supposed to modify these out of the box ones. Okay. Now, going back to Brad's question, let's go back first to Brad, is how do I see? So if I want to go to a permission set, we'll use the first, we'll use D365 accounts payable just for conversation's sake. So if I want to find that permission set, do a search for permission sets, find D365 accounts payable, open it up. It'll list out exactly what you just said, Brad. Table, all the tables, the pay, you know, pages, it, whatever it looks at, whatever the permissions that have been defined are listed there. If you don't like one you see, kind of that's where, again, in this, if this is just one permission set, if I need to give this to, say, five different people and two of them, I don't want to let them have access to something or do not, then I need to create more of a custom permission set by a security group role, the old okay. user group role I make. So this is kind of where two things. One is the obviously copy the permission sets or copy the role uh, and start making custom ones. Now, I like the copy of the, you know, I don't, I like copy, but here's the funny thing. Though I love the out of the box stuff and I like the new feature of deny, I actually then go back to one of the best, one of the coolest features that are probably overlooked because you, you two have, you either, neither one of you have mentioned it yet, but the recorder. I and the was rec- going to say that, Steve. Yeah. Oh, my Steve. I knew it. <laughs> See, you didn't, you didn't let me get a word in to be able to talk about that, but I was going. Dude, that easy. was easy. <laughs> it's not sponsored it was by easy, that company. <laughs> So. No, that was great. So with these permission sets, the native permission sets that are in, included with the application or with extensions, you can't modify, but you can copy and make adjustments too. Yes. I mean, uh, um, be, you'll which get is good element. because yeah. if, if features get added to the application and they get put into those roles, and I have come across this where you know, uh, roles that weren't default were assigned, but they were custom roles assigned and new features came out and users after the update got tons of permission errors. And, it, you know, it came to the fact that new tables, yeah. right, new functionality was added on logging in, but they had custom security roles. So that is one thing to be aware of, but you can copy the permissions and change them. And uh, I, I thought I was the only one that had a phone ringing around here. <laughs> See, I usually have like, if I want to go, I just pretend someone's at the door. Then I can, you know. Um, He's having fun of that I media post, uh, media door. buttons. See? He's, I'm walking he's over having to the a blast door. over there with his uh, little, all of his little <laughs> toys he's got now. I love it. I love it. I have footsteps the clapping, walking. the cheers, you know. Uh. <laughs> then I can open the door because somebody's here, you know. Uh. And then, Steve, let me text you. Look at that. Uh, this, okay, it, it, we, just, we just took this to an all-time low <laughs> of Brad playing with a media board, and you're the first one to have that experience. So uh, if I could throw this AOL. blue one here fast AOL. enough. Okay, so let's go back. So we talked about the permissions and the objects, but now if somebody would like to create a new custom permission set, you started talking about the recorder. What, what is yeah. this recorder? So... 
one thing to note is you can actually, and I love this. Let me turn this off completely. I thought that was um, me for a second. <laughs> so um, the one thing about the recorder that I love, and, and so as you go into permissions, uh, you can actually search for the recorder because it's a way that you can sit down with a user and let's say you have 20, I'll make it simple, 20 different users in your company. And you can actually come in and individually say, bring the user together. So have this user log into a laptop, log in with a role, give them a role at least, and then turn on the recorder and record this person's keystrokes and actions. And what I love about that is the fact that the recorder will record everything they do from start to finish. You click the word start, and then this person goes. So let's say the first thing they do in the morning is they go and I'm just making things up here. The first thing they'll do is create purchase orders. So let's say they have to go create purchase orders. The second thing they do is maybe they post purchase invoices. The next thing they do is they cut some checks. And I'm making it up here. So they do various things. You'll get to the bitter end and you'll stop the recorder. Now, one thing to note here. They, the user, are not really, they should not be doing this. There should be somebody like an IT person or preferably the partner really should be doing this in conjunction with the user because they are the most knowledgeable one in this. So they can certainly help them along and set this up and get and watch the recording and help them because there's going to be trial and error here. First, they don't know BC is as advanced as a partner does or somebody implementing this. So they might say, okay, what's your next step? So we're gonna, you're going to be talking out loud. The recorder doesn't record voice, by the way. So as they're doing this, they're just slowly moving around the system. It's recording all your permissions. So I went into table, you know, went into the vendor table. I had to go into the, the purchase order header table, the purchase order line table. I had to click post. So I had to do, you know, a code unit. Oh, I then had to go and do some purchase invoice headers, purchase invoice lines. Oh, I had to post to posted purchase invoices. Oh, maybe I had to do a po post uh, posted purchase receipt, and so on and so on and so it, on. It, it picks up the indirect, indirect tables too, right? Yes. See, yeah. So, so the yeah. recording, just for clarification, isn't recording their screen or recording what they're doing. It's recording their actions and recording the objects, which we spoke about a few, few moments ago and what yes. access they need to those objects to do their task. And so in, I think, as Chris mentioned, the indirect as well, that's the most important piece. There's so I love many the indirect. indirect. It's the most underutilized permission <laughs> in the world because even with the developers putting in you know, the inherent table permissions or permissions for objects that you need within their code because it doesn't allow someone to have direct access to data in this case that I may be speaking mm -hmm. about, but they have indirect access through the use of a system process. I'm sorry, Steve. I well, didn't mean think to take about it. it. You, make you, a, you, you took my recorder purchase. thunder, so I had to jump in and take you a thunder on indirect. Yeah. Well, think about it. You know, I, I make a purchase order and I'm, I have to enter a line and maybe I have to hit hypothetically a, a GL account, just make believe. But indirectly, I need I need to look at the list, but I don't want you to go any further. I do don't want you to look to go to mm -hmm. that table directly to see the account, uh, chart of account card. I don't want you to see the balance in it or something. I only I need you to indirectly get to somewhere to perform an action, and that's really what the indirect is. I love it. Um, I indirectly have to update a field to uh, to post to a record, but I don't want you to touch you know that table directly. So. Um, but I will say the recording to me is the great. I love the recorder. I mean, we, we just finished a customer and we did 30 different recordings. And the reason why we had to do 30 different ones was because they could not choose from this list that I've been throwing out here on the screen. Don't get me wrong here. You, I, I'm sure most people can pick from this list. It's not that hard in reading things. And I'm, I'm not saying there's permissions in here that are grossly... Um, maybe giving somebody too much access to that degree. But when you work with certain private companies, maybe they're a little more looser in terms of how much permissions you give somebody. But when you work in public or a public company, SOX compliant, trust me, mm -hmm. you get to that level. And then it, this is kind of crossing into that, ooh, yeah, the, you know, a four, SOX 404 control or an internal control. You're kind of stepping into places people shouldn't be in. So 
the segregation of duties become more important with that Sox compliance. Yeah, Steve, I, I'm curious. Though, have you found any additional challenges, that, even with you know the the new features and how easy it, it is now versus back in the nav days? Um, is there still challenges that you're facing with this tool? I think the biggest challenge is what we found in the the recordings we just did was that the u- the users really don't know sometimes what they don't know. So I'm new to BC. Let's make believe I'm the new user. Okay, you're my boss, Chris. You're my boss. Brad's the you know the the head of the department, and he kind of knows what some people have to have permissions to do. So here we are doing this implementation. I I'm sitting there. You're sitting. If Chris at the is desk your boss. Today. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I I would quit now. Best I, I want to quit just hearing it. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Goodbye. <laughs> um. But just the problem we saw was that we were sitting in front of the screen and we we were doing these things for you know a few hours. Remember, each recording could take as long as it takes. But we were in the room and we're asking people, so what do you do next? And they're like, well, sometimes you hear the, I don't know, and they're like, well, what do you do today? And they tell you, but are you going to do that in BC? And they're like, I don't know. So I think what happens is that you're you're missing maybe somebody who knows what the person is going to do. And everybody's so new to Business Central that it becomes – that's probably the the biggest hang-up I've had. I'm not saying – I'm going back to your question, which is really – I haven't found a crux yet in between the recorder and what current BC has to offer that will stymie me not to set up the permissions, if you know what I mean from that perspective. When you do your recording, do you – you mentioned you do it start to finish. Do you do do. each – function or do you say this is what my daily role is and what i mean by that is if i am a sales order processor right i may have to you know view a customer i may have to enter and post an order i may have to view an invoice would you do one what do you recommend or what do you think is easier i know there's different situations to just do one permission for that uh sales order processor or to have a customer edit, I mean, excuse me, customer view, sales order, edit and post, purchase invoice post, and then group them together. I like grouping them together because if I need that for somebody else, I'd rather just call upon it and I've already done it once and, and kind of like a one and done kind of thing. Why am I going to repeat myself twice? So when we ask them to come to the to the screen, you know, come with all your tasks, we, we ask them if they can write it down first so we can see what we're about to do. And then we do let them go. So we'll turn the recorder on and we'll say, okay, do task number one. And we do ask the company, do you want one permission or, you know, individual permissions? I like individuals. Uh, in some cases, some people say it's the role so my sales order processor person, so it's one long permission, meaning yeah. everything's going to be in that circle. Yeah. Now That gets I think difficult, that's, I think. Yeah, and I think it's ugly to manage. Yes. Like when you think about it, can you imagine trying to manage all those tasks inside of one single permission? What if something changes, one little tiny thing changes in there? Now you have to go think about it and say, wait a minute, I'm, I have to pull this out. Wait a minute, ooh, that's an indirect, oh, wait, I need that indirectly. Oh, wait, mm-hmm. I can't do that. And you're basically yeah, fighting a rabbit hole. You're fighting a fighting fire with. Yeah. Yeah. And well, if you have that one too, and then if you have three people with similar functions to view the customer, you. you have to find all of them because we added a new, <laughs> you know, lookup or something to to another table. It, it could be, you know, this is why Chris usually recommends just making everybody super. And but <laughs> I, I did see something creative that he did the other day. He said you can limit the permissions by putting the company in the super role. So at least it breaks it down so they can't see everything. I, you know, I mean, I wish I wish there was an easy way to, if we, even if you copy, I know these are out of the box permissions we're looking at on the screen here, but the, the funny thing is they're good permissions. There's nothing wrong with it. I know it gets tougher and tougher with the, the more internal control and formalized, you know, for each company. And again, I know some of them are give more permissions than are necessary, but in the end, you know, there is the new do not, you know, you can take away a permission and, but you'd have to copy it, but at least you're using out of the box permissions. Um, it goes back to what you said. I think you both said it actually is 
you know, every wave release or maybe a new, you know, maybe a subsequent in the month, maybe a mid month release comes out. And what happens when a new release comes out and we all get a batch of new permissions that have come out from Microsoft for BC for whatever reason, I, they added a new feature in warehousing. They added a new feature in manufacturing jobs, service, um, somewhere in the system, something new comes out and it's inside of the standard system and you have custom roles. You have to literally go back and say, you have to manually add that new permission into each and every one of those custom roles you created. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, it's a tough thing, but that's kind of like the, the give and take, I guess I'll call it. Yeah. yeah. Steve, I, so, I got a question for so, you. So you said you didn't have a lot of challenges so far uh, with this tool. You know, is there anything that you can think of that they should improve uh, maybe on future releases, future updates? I, I would love to see as it's recording um, if there's a way to – Almost, I know you. When you stop the recording, it starts. It basically pool. It starts developing all the. You know, it shows you the tables and everything that it's done. But I wish there was a way along the way to almost like generate something in the background, almost on a pause effect, where I can just see what's happening in the background and almost like work. You know, de define more. And I know it's not going to happen, but my, I'm always about field level permission. There's just some things I just don't want people to see a certain field or something. And I wish field level permissions can go without having to go using an, an advanced tool to get to that level. I know it's mm -hmm. possible. I've heard rumors that some people have used the out of the box to figure out ways to do it. Well, I think I mean, you could I've do never... it with personalization by role in some essence, right? If you could design it, hide a few. I mean, it's a little cumbersome. That's no, I don't even know if you could that, do. Yeah, I, think. I don't. I just don't know if it's possible. I know I've seen it on the app that's out there. You can get down to that finite level, and which is fine. But I wished they can just take what the app has and just put it into the, put it into the recorder and into the system once and for all, and just basically just allow us as I'm recording a permission of somebody's to kind of like almost say, well, okay, pause. Let me go in, see what just happened for a second, Manip maybe turn off a couple of fields, turn things on and off because I don't want these to be there because maybe that's a control mechanism I have to put in place and then save it, you know, and then basically move on to my next role. So it's almost like a, a way to kind of say, you know, let me look at the picture, um, almost like a, a video, somebody singing. Oh, stop for a second here. Let me let me hear. Let me listen to that. I want to hear how it's going. Oh, let's re-record it or let me change it around a little bit. Kind of like the way you do a video or a podcast. It's kind of like you want to listen to something and edit it a little bit. And I want to edit it along the way before I have to get through the whole thing and kind of if it if it's all you know, I don't want to re-redo it. I want to edit things along the way. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So we have permission sets, which are a, you know basically a group of permissions. Those permission sets can also include other permission sets, so you can make a sure. role for that permission set, Absolutely. which in essence give you effective permissions, which you can see, I believe, you know, based upon all the permission sets for a user for a user. And when well, you're yeah. managing the permissions, you can't modify a system permission set, which is what we would call the out of the box, or you're referring to as out of the box, or the default permissions. But you can copy a permission set to a new custom one and then make changes to it. And then also part of UAT, you're recommending to test the permission sets to the application based upon the roles that you work with the user. And then you could also import or export those permission, export those permissions from UAT and import them into production all from your permission set page, right? So you can manage the permissions that way. I yeah. do like the process that you have for sitting down and mapping it out on paper because I find if you start the process, not just this process, but many processes, you know, again, if you're writing tests for your modifications, you know, to come up and design the test or how you want to test it before you work, it actually lets you map it out and plan it a little more neatly, right? So I think it helps you cover... I mean, I agree with you. I mean, you know, this is just out of the box role roles and permissions. But, you know, I worked it now flip it around here. So this is my person, Lindsay, 
you know, who I might give a business manager role to, but if I don't want to, you know, and again, this role has built in permissions, which I then could are predefined here. But if I was going to give her, per, her permission sets manually, let's forget about the ro profile here that I give her, you know, I can sit here and say, well, Lindsay is an accountant and Lindsay gets, you know, you know, full access or gets basic or whatever. You can actually, I'm working it backwards from the user should have these permission sets. And then I can go in and say, does the business manager role give her this permission set? If not, you know, these are the permission sets she should have because maybe the, the basic role for business manager over here, if you look under this column, it's just, well, that's just too much for Lindsay. Lindsay doesn't need all that stuff. You know, I need to do it myself manually. So, um, I, I think it's, a, I think it's an exercise every implementer should do with their customer, no matter what, is to uh, teach them the, the, the basic understanding of what a permission is, what does it mean to them, you know, what does these roles mean, what do these permissions mean, uh, dr drill into the permission, teach them that, you can either use out of the box, or you can make custom ones, you I can love record that. them if you, you know, if you want to or not. I, I, think I love this that. Is great that. That's because... a clap right there, Brad, because a lot of people don't do oh, this. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> you you <laughs> have to cue me. I was just going to say that... <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is one of those things, right? One of those items on a project implementation that I rarely see broken out as a task. Yes. And to me, it's one of the most important because you want to make sure you protect your data and your function. Again, size of an implementation is going to matter. If you have two people who run the entire system, you can be a little more lax with the security, obviously, because they're going to do everything. But as you start breaking it up, to me, it's important to put the guardrails up. One, because you want to protect your data. There may be sensitive data that you want people to see. But also, if you put the guardrails up, you prevent mistakes, right? Security goes many ways. You can protect the information, you know, limit access, but also prevent some issues because if I'm not really certain what I'm doing and I start clicking around and I start posting invoices or entering orders, right, even accidentally it could be a problem. Uh, and you can also, if you're in, you know, somebody who manages inventory uh, for an organization, you talked about socks with your checks and balances or your segregation of duties, you can make sure that nobody's entering a sales order, you know, and then shipping it. Uh, I did see that happen before where they went in and changed the ship to addresses and, you know, uh, <laughs> were able to ship product to someplace different. Uh, so you, it gives you the opportunity to protect and uh, make sure that uh, your system's sound. Yeah. You it. know, I mean, one, th one cool thing that I would love for s to see them uh, add in the future is a built-in screenshot. As you record, it should take screenshots along the way and have AI built the description. That would be amazing. I, that would be a separate tool. <laughs> I'm not certain on the recording of the screen because there could be sensitive information and there would be questions of where does well, that true. information go. But we I could think, use Kronos data. That would be pretty cool. I think another cloud share type program that can scrape your screen might be helpful with you to come up with the, yeah, the guide. Cool. Yeah. But well, if you get all this AI stuff, and you, Steve, and I can go to the actual Riverside and have you know, <laughs> a drink or something while everybody else is working. Actually, that would be really cool when you think of it this way, though. It, let's say with AI and how intelligent everything is becoming, you know, as the recorder is running, when you really think about it, you know, if you, as we are speaking through a microphone, and if I was doing these transactions, just like any good recorder, if I was going to do a purchase order, why not record the keystrokes and actually fill in the blanks? You know, I am learning how to enter a purchase order. I enter my number. I hit enter to get the next number. I'll enter my vendor number. And so say I do different things. I'm filling in the screens and it's creating in the background almost like a learning document that I can put into just maybe a Word document that I can hand mm -hmm. out to every user. So now take a simple AI, you know, let it kind of build my little learning document behind the scenes in the recorder that, you know, I don't have to do separately, you know, using screenshots. Wow. And, See, so let's talk that? about that because you could do and build the, you know, how they have the onboarding experience where you can put in, you know, tool tips and about text and, 
you know, checklists, have it automatically build an extension for how to do it. Steve, well, think about it. I mean, recorder is somebody taking their job and just doing their job. So Steve, why you get not another clap. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you get a cheer. Uh. And then when Chris goes, we're just going to go. <laughs> it's all over now, everybody. <laughs> Brad has his little, uh, I'm, I don't I'm, even know what they call I'm, this. All I'm picturing is this d dashboard of like toys with you. Def Com 1, claps, cheers, <laughs> you know, the boo. The boo. I didn't put you the boo, boo on there. See, Chris is supposed to be the producer over here. We have to figure <laughs> out how we can put it so he can like change this board for me. But Chris, you didn't tell me to put the boo on here because I, you know, I have this. <laughs> no, it's pretty close. <laughs> You know, I need a boo. And then what's this? Uh, wake up. Wake You're up. Late. Wake up. You're late for a oh, day. That's it. Wake up. And then, you know, we can do this. Uh, Steve, uh, what do you call a fish with two knees? A fish with two knees? Yeah. A toony All fish. Right, you got me. Oh, God. <laughs> you like He's that? having a good time with his thing, man. <laughs> See, You're Steve came on to talk fun. with us about permissions, and he's the one that gets the, you know, let's get the toys all out of the way episode. I mean, <laughs> this is definitely let's get the toys out of the way, but it, it's it, actually that one's okay. I like that didn't done, you know. Well, you can tell it's a joke too, Steve. Tell a joke. Uh, oh, I don't know any good jokes. Not I'm the wrong guy. I mean, I I would have to I'd have to go ask Chat GPT for a joke. Oh, we have Chris GPT. He's, Chris he's GPT, a Jets can you fan. tell us a joke? <laughs> he's a Jets fan. There's no joke. They don't joke around. No, there's no joke. <laughs> I wish I had the boo. That's my boo for today. But there will be a boo added as soon as this is done. If no. I were quick enough, I could do it while we were speaking. But I oh, want to hold pay on attention. a second. Oh, oh, thanks, Aaron Rodgers, for that. Touchdown, Aaron. Yeah, baby. Uh, look at Steve has his own sound cue over there on his media board. I like that. That's I like so that. Funny. No, see. Chris, edit that out. I'm going to mark this. I can even mark these clips now where Chris has to go Oh, back. my God. Here, here we go. It's marked. Clip created, no. Chris. Uh, edit out that Go Jets thing uh, that we have Rogers. there. Rogers. He'll give okay, – he'll help so you like two, two, two years. <laughs> Jets. No, you can leave that in there. It's uh, we only edit out mistakes. Well, now the Jets are a mistake, so uh, we can edit them out. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. So permissions in here. We talked about effective permissions. We talked that you have the ability to record permissions. Uh, Steve, you have this fancy sheet. If uh, are you willing to share this sheet with anybody? Yeah, absolutely. I'll send it to you guys. You can throw it into the recording. Okay. Or you know, people can reach out to you. Uh, Just reach out to me, and, I'll, and you know, whoever re needs to reach out to me, um, you know, send me an email, and I'll uh, get it back. I'll email it right back to them. And how can uh, somebody email you? You know, you have five thousand email addresses. I'm not even certain yes, which one I to have use 5, anymore. Yes, I have You know, um, and, and that special one, you know, which is the, uh, you know, uh, dynamic. You know, I have that special one called Dynamics Corner. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, oh, we can give you a Dynamics Corner email address if you want one. So, uh, but no, they can reach me at. Um, my uh, first initial S, then my last name Chinsky, at accelerant a c c e l e r y n t dot com. And it's Chinsky with a Y, not an E Y. Yes, correct. Or they so, can find me on LinkedIn and you know all of the other places, you know stuff like that. We'll put those uh, the ways that individuals can find you on LinkedIn uh, on the show notes. Uh, and this is a great sheet. It's on the screen. Those that are listening. Uh, Steve will give it to you. You can download and see. It's a good little checklist. I think that you can adapt for your implementation. It's a good foundation to get you started, even looking at the base roles. I personally will take this from you. So if you could email this to me. I'm not emailing you asking for it. I'm verbally asking you at this moment. Um, and then you can send it to me. All right, Steve, Chris, anything else you want to add for permissions? Um. I think the one thing I would add is this, and I think this is just we being part of such a, a, a bigger community. If you don't know what you're doing, don't assume ever on these permissions. Don't just 
click one and just add one just for the heck of it. Don't use super just because it makes your life easier as an implementer. It is not the end all be all. I, I, I can throw super on there and I, nobody's going to give a you know what. Um, ask somebody. Go out to, you know, email people you know. Go on to some of the forums that are out there and just ask people, can you help me or something like that. There are plenty of folks out there. You know, reach out to one of the three of us, for instance, or whatever the case may be if you're listening to this. But don't just do, don't just do super just because. I mean, it, it's not what you should do. And um, trust me, your customer will love you for being more due diligent because you're, you're caring more about their company and the controls and stuff like that. So, I mean, um, just, don't, just don't go willy-nilly here. Um, and don't, the other thing is make sure that if you're talking to somebody who says, my job is X, Y, Z, that somebody's reviewing this above that person <laughs> just because i mean oh i need access to the bank accounts and the and to do some payment journals and yeah i yes i need that because you know one day you know this person's going to be out sick and that's the one day i'm going to have to cut those checks so give it to me today you know and stuff like that i'm like sure i will yeah i won't have a job tomorrow but i'll give you that security today it's, it's steve important. what you're saying is you, that don't be lazy don't be lazy right Put the work in. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. You'll, you'll it, appreciate it, it. You will because, again, as I had stated and I have come across before, users do not tell you what they have access to. They'll tell you what they don't have access to. So you better, in my opinion, starting off a little tight and then validating the request for additional security permissions as things progress. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Steve. I want to see if I'm done. Let me see if I have a media board. I'm looking at the uploads here. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, and don't forget about your ISV permissions. That's the other thing. I forgot. Oh, totally forgot. ISV permissions. Oh, yes. See, this is like a, uh, you know, what do they call it? An encore? All right, we're the back encore. now. <laughs> so the ISV permissions, when you install an ISV extension, they are required to have permission sets as well. 100% now. So, so make sure that you review those permission sets, the features and the functionality that are included to them, and then you can copy them. Or the recorder still works with those permissions as well, too. So if you're doing a function for an extension, if you go through it, the recorder will pick anything that you extend of the base application as well, correct? Yes, it does. I mean, if I was going to go do, and if I was playing around in like, um, I'm trying to think of something simple, a credit, you know, if I'm doing credit card processing and I need, Maybe there's a credit card app out there that I have to pull in a permission set for, or maybe I'm doing something with, um, you know, EDI where I have to, you know, grab some EDI stuff, or maybe I'm doing some warehousing functionality or manufacturing functionality, and I have to pu pu push and pull from different apps that are out there. They will, you know, look to those because get those extensions are going to kick off those app extensions, and I have to go into those permission sets, so it has it will pull them in. Sounds good. So the recorder works with the base application as well as ISVs. And then you have your permission sets. You can search for permission sets within Business Central to pull up the permission sets page and be able to manage them from there. And then there's also an effective permission page as well. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Steve. As always, Chris, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you both. Give him a... Give him a... Oh. <laughs> That's for you, Everybody. Steve. Thank you. That's and for this you, is Steve. For Chris. This is for Chris. <laughs> uh, and and with that, wait, 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 wait. I'm a stand-up comedian, man. Hold I love on, that. hold on. He's walking to the door. Hey, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Okay, guys, I have to go. Someone's at the door here. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for your time for another episode of In the Dynamics Corner Chair. And thank you to our guests for participating. Thank you, Brad, for your time. It is a wonderful episode of Dynamics Corner Chair. I would also like to thank our guests for jo joining us. Thank you for all of our listeners tuning in as well. You can find Brad at developerlife.com. That is D-V-L-P-R-L-I-F-E.com. And you can interact with them via Twitter, D-V-L-P-R-L-I-F-E. You can also find me at mattolino.io. 
M-A-T-A-L-I-N-O dot I-O. And my Twitter handle is Matalino16. And see, you can see those links down below in their show notes. Again, thank you, everyone. Thank you and take care.